Howdy, y'all. My name is Brunt Halfaton Mist Runner, Torn War of the Mist Runner Tribe, and today I wanted to do a tanking class, Tanking 101. Basically, what the job is and how to excel in that role. Now, the first thing that I wanted to talk about were just some of the basics of what it means to be the tank. As the tank, you are the person who is in the utmost position of danger. If there's a boss that breeds nasty fire, you are in the front, standing between the boss and the rest of your team. This is a high pressure role. Tanking is not for the faint of heart or spirit. And if you're someone who gets easily stressed out, it may not be the best call for you because you've got to make sure that the fight is under your team's control, that the boss is where it ought to be for your team to have the greatest level of success and that your mechanics are pretty good. That means using your keyboard and mouse to get your character to do what it needs to do and keep the fight in good sorts for y'all. So what are your objectives as a tank? You've got two main objectives as a tank. You want to survive first, because if you die, the boss and the fight just goes haywire, then everybody dies. That's your number one priority, is to not die, which means you should have some pretty good mitigation. You should be using a shield so you can block attacks. You should have pretty high armor. You should have a lot of health. Just real quick, I'll go over some of the stats that are useful for a tank. Strength. Is this a mitigation stat? Nope. It's a threat stat. Increases your attack power and increases your block by 16. So actually, it's a little bit of a help for blocking with the shield. So you could say it gives you a bit of mitigation, but it's mostly a threat stat for attack power. Agility is an amazing stat for tanking. Gives you dodge chance, it gives you armor, and it gives you critical hit chance. Stamina. Kind of goes without saying that's how much health you have. Health is really nice because it helps you survive both magical attacks and physical attacks. Intellect only really helps train weapon skill as you're leveling up and stuff. Spirit helps your health regen when you're not in combat, basically irrelevant for you, unless you're on a spiritual journey or pilgrimage of some kind. Armor reduces your physical damage taken by a percentage relative to your armor amount. This is a very, very good stat for tanks. But on your journey, you're going to have to be practical, use the pieces you have, and have options for yourself. So one thing that I carry with me all the time is some threat gear and some mitigation gear so I can customize. What you see me wearing now is pretty much full mitigation gear. I've got Dreadnought set on, I've got my shield on, and I do have some even more heavy mitigation options with the Stylene's Impending Scarab. Now what is the second objective of a tank? after surviving, well, it's to hold threat. Because if you don't hold threat, the same thing happens where the boss runs around the room killing all your friends and it's very sad. So you do need a bit of threat. So what you have to do is you have to assess the fight that you're in. Is this fight a really heavy damage fight where I'm just getting hit super hard and I need to do everything I can to survive, like patchwork? If that's the case, you wanna go full mitigation gear. That means full dreadnought like this, or whatever the level 70 equivalent of your full mid set is. But let's say I'm in an easier fight where the DPS, they really want to pump and I'm not really at risk of dying from stuff. So I have another option here. I can put on Conqueror's gear. This stuff has more agility on it. Maybe I have a necklace that has crit instead of dodge. Maybe I've got shoulders that have attack power and hit rating and agility and strength instead of block value defense, and stam. So this would be my threat set. And every tank should have a mixture of gear on them at all times for whatever poles they need to respond to. You could even dual wield if you wanted to, but as deep prod I'm expecting to shield slam, so shield we go. With rings, you can have both threat oriented rings and mitigation oriented rings. This makes you flexible as a tank, where you can respond to various kinds of pulls and bosses that you're going to be faced with. Generally speaking, trash pulls aren't too hard until you get to heroics, so you can wear a lot of threat gear and just try to pump as much threat as you can, which means the DPS can pump harder. I also highly, highly recommend details and setting up tiny threat. You can go here in the options panel, just clone your damage window. Options panel, plugins, 
and you can add tiny threat and all this kind of stuff there are plenty of videos on that but you need some kind of threat meter so you can tell who's climbing up near you in threat so the role of the tank is going to be to hold threat on everything and also to in some sense lead the team you are the one who is initiating a lot of the pulls even if a hunter is pulling stuff to you it's going to fall to you to decide where the battle is fought so what is a really good rule of thumb for just tanking stuff if you're tanking a boss and you don't really know what it does a really good practice is to keep your back against the wall now why is this a lot of bosses have a knockback effect which can cause you to fly across the room and end up somewhere where you don't want to be so if you want to have a really steady and stable fight where the DPS can just focus on the rotation and open up put your back against a wall like this it's pretty easy there are a lot of fights that teach you this lesson throughout Blackwing Lair and so on with Wing Buffet so in general if you've got a boss and you don't know what it does put your back against the wall keep the fight nice and smooth what's another thing that you want to focus on as a tank you want to focus on attitude do you see how I just died this is a really important lesson a lot of tanks when they die they'll get all rustled they'll get into this kind of diva mode where they feel like everybody ought to be doing better and I shouldn't have died and now I'm gonna lecture people and call people out oftentimes that doesn't really help if you have a problem with the pull you can kindly suggest what could be done better and then let them try it again you need to be patient as a tank because while you are able to wipe the pull by your mistakes the healers can also wipe by their mistakes and DPS can also wipe with their mistakes and you're gonna be a much more pleasant tank to be around if you can fall down get killed drop your buffs and then pop back up without making much of a fuss you have things like logs and vods that you can review if you really want to min max a fight and improve it you don't need to be a diva and be all pissed off at people because the pull didn't go your way sometimes that happens and if you can be steady that directs the attitude of the room to be steady as well so be patient sometimes you die real life stuff comes up sometimes people get distracted sometimes they make an honest mistake and they misclick this is all part of human error and you should be kind to the people you're tanking with the leadership side of things means having some sense of what the pulls are if you don't know what's going on you should communicate that to people that's going to make you much more useful as a tank so people know what to tell you if you're going into a raid and say you're an off tank and you've never been in there before and they've got a fight and they say hey does everyone know what they're doing if you don't know what you're doing you need to just tell them that's okay there's no fault of being ignorant about how a fight works what's worse is pretending you know what you're doing and then ending up not knowing the mechanics and then you get everybody killed so ignorance is okay just tell the raid yep I'm able to tank stuff I know how to use a shield I have mitigation but I don't really know where I'm supposed to be or what this stuff does that can be explained to you another thing to talk about is just the raw mechanical difficulty of tanking this is not an easy job if you're thinking about tanking DPSing and healing tanking is the most difficult job mechanically speaking I would say even for bears and paladins who tank in the sense that you have to know where you are and control the positioning of the fight it's very unforgiving if you lose threat it's very unforgiving if you don't get enough healing and you don't use your mitigation cooldowns and all that kind of stuff so tanking is not for the faint of heart so you should have a lot of courage in the role and just be prepared to make mistakes and then bounce back from that another thing to point out too is to be able to take responsibility when you are the one to make a mistake what's a common mistake that I've made a few times in say Nax Ramus when I was fury prot I had a ability called death wish which increases my damage done which is really nice but it also lowers my armor one time on my exna I got killed during the web wrap and it's really common for people to just say well the heal is fucked up because I died but in reality I died because I was being overly aggressive with the pull I should have focused on my mitigation 
but instead, I was trying to zug even more, which caused me to put myself at a greater risk and then die. It's not something that's bad to say I messed up. It's really big to take responsibility. And tanking is a big job, so you should get used to taking responsibility for your mistakes. People will really respect that about you. So we already talked about itemization, focusing on your stamina, getting agility where you can find it for some dodge rating and also for a little bit of armor. Block chance is pretty good. Parry is a really good stat because after a parry, you get a little bit of parry haste so your next attack is a little faster. In that sense, you would say 1% parry is better than 1% dodge. Let's just look at some of my mitigation percentages when I'm in my full mitigation gear. I have 22.5% chance to block with a shield. That's pretty nice. A block doesn't remove all the damage, but it does take the edge off a lot of the damage. What else do I have? Dodge chance. 18.7%, pretty nice. And then my parry chance is about 10%. So for all the attacks that are coming in, I can avoid all the damage from an attack by parrying it, I avoid all the damage of an attack by dodging it, and I avoid a chunk of the damage by blocking it. Those are all good, and that saves the healer's mana. And your group time, because mana takes time. Healers have to drink to regen. What else do we got? Let's talk about some of the basic tanking mechanics. One of the most important mechanics that you can get used to is your tab target. I'm just going to pull this group of three here and show you how to tab Sunder or tab Devastate here in BC. We've got the first dog. I Devastate, I tab, I Devastate. I look at this, I tab, and I Devastate. So now all of these have one Sunder on them and they're going to be stuck to me pretty good because I have 1.5k threat on each of them. Tab Sunder, Tab Sunder, Tab Sunder. It's pretty easy. And this is going to be more than enough threat to keep stuff off your healers. If there is a DPS who's really focused on one of those targets, they could pull threat by exceeding the threat of one Sunder. Or one Devastate. So, I'll show you the next mechanic. The next mechanic for tanking successfully is target markers. You want to go into key bindings. You want to go into target markers. And this is how I do it. F1 through F8 are all my targets. Skull, cross, square, moon, triangle, etc. And I do them in a particular order in a way that makes it easy to remember for people. I'll show you. I do skull as F1. Skull is usually the first target for pretty much every raid. Skull means kill, people understand that. And then I do X as my second, that's F2. X has two lines in it, easy to remember. Triangle has three sides, I have that bound to F3. Four is square, has four sides. Five is moon, but if you're in a heroic, I would use this for sheep, because moon is nighttime and you get sleepy and sleep at nighttime, and also uh, sheep jump over a fence or something, I don't know. Moon is sheep. That's F5. F6, I bind a diamond. That's really nice for sap, because the sap animation is purple, easy to remember. Circle is F7. I don't know about that. Circle has infinite number of signs, whatever. And then I have star is F8. I also use this for a shackle target, because the shackle animation is yellow. This is something you can get familiar with, and it ends up being pretty fast for marking targets. The way that you would do this as a tank is you want to prioritize building the most threat on the skull target first and then just putting a little bit of threat on X and triangle. I'm going to show you a pull method here where you can establish a little bit of initial threat on all targets and then build some big threat on the primary target. So watch this pull method. I'm going to charge battle shout and then I can bloodthirst, thunderclap, demo shout, defensive stance. So these two targets have a little bit of threat on them but I'm mainly targeting the skull for my revenge and my shield slam and all that. You also have some other tools in your kit. If you're a Torn, you can War Stomp. That reduces the incoming damage by a good bit. You can use Shield Block and all this kind of stuff. Sometimes you pull a little bit of extra. If you have the mechanics for it, you can tab and then use your F keys to mark stuff. 
If not, just try to tab, hit everything once or twice, make sure it stays stuck to you. I have Twitch chat open here, and there's a good point that I forgot to mention, and that is one of the advantages of block. Blocking with the shield prevents a boss from getting crushing blows on you. Crushing blows are kind of like crits, but not quite, and they hit really, really hard. If you have shield block active, that means at this moment you have the buff of it, you are immune to crushing blows. And if you look at it, you could potentially have shield block uptime at about 100%. Yep, it refreshes right around when the cooldown is up. So I wanted to show you here an example of a deep prot rotation in a stable fight where you don't have to move using all the abilities as fast as you can. This is Patchwork and Nax Ramis, and I'll show you now. This is mainly for warriors. So this is our Nax from the weekend. I'm deep prot, I'm opening with shield slam, and I'm hitting heroic strike, I'm hitting shield block every time, and I'm hitting revenge, heroic, and devastate. I'm using pretty much all these abilities on cooldown. Your prioritization should be shield slam is your biggest threat ability, then revenge is really great threat per rage, heroic strike every time you can, bloodthirst when you can, and devastate for any extra globals that you have which ends up being quite a few. If you look at my hotkeys down here, my keys are very easy to reach. And this is another really important aspect of tanking, which we're going to look at more in the Hagen fight. Whenever you're using abilities, you want to think about where your hand is on the keyboard and whether you can hit two buttons at the same time. A lot of times, a tank is unable to spend their rage and really pump the most threat that they can for their class because they're either trying to click abilities or the keys for their abilities are pretty far from each other and it's awkward to press two things at the same time. One rule that I set for myself is I should be able to hit shield slam, heroic strike, and shield block all at the same time. If you look at the keys, I have shield slam on E, which is super easy to hit. I have heroic strike on Q, which is also very easy to hit. And shield block is on B, which is easy to hit, but if you have a small hand, you could just move it into V or something. Well, you might be asking, but you have Q and E bound to abilities. How do you turn your character? You just use right click to move your camera. Some other things that you want to manage with a fight like this will be making sure your battle shout is up all the time. And also you want to make sure that demo shout is up on the boss and that there are five stacks of Sunder. A nice thing about being deep prot is devastate is a part of your rotation. So Sunder is going to be up all the time just by virtue of you doing that. Back in classic, there was... Fury prot and Sunder wasn't as much threat as Battle Shout, but that's the past, so we can just talk about BC. But if you'll notice here, Patchwork is hitting me a whole lot. You can look up here at my portrait in the top left, and you can see how hard he's hitting me, and also how often I dodge. He's hitting me for about 1.4 to 1.6k. Some of the attacks miss, but he's hitting me super fast, and I'm getting tons of heals spammed on me. This is what I would call a very rage-rich fight. A fight where the boss hates you so much that you just have so much rage that you can use all of your abilities. But if you're in a dungeon where stuff isn't hitting you quite as hard, you're not going to have as much rage income, so you might not be able to use all of your abilities. What I would do is probably do less heroic strike and also less shield block. If stuff isn't hitting you super hard, you don't really need to block every attack. You do generate one rage when a block occurs, but that's not quite as much as maybe just auto attacking the boss or using some threat based ability to build more threat or to kill things in advance through the content. So this is pretty much the warrior rotation. One of the reasons that warrior tank is the highest APM job in the whole raid is because we have so many abilities that are off the global cooldown. The global cooldown, if you look at this disarm here, is when this timer goes around in a circle. You can only cast one of those abilities every global cooldown, but if you look at some things like shield block, they're not doing that. Neither is blood rage. Neither is heroic strike. So all of those you should be able to press 
while you're also hitting your shield slams, hitting your devastates, hitting your revenges, and so on. So off GCD is one of the main things that means Warrior is going to be using way more buttons than a lot of other classes. So if you're a player who's very confident with using your keyboard hand, it's really fun to play. Very high tempo and very fast. If you're someone who is easily stressed out and overwhelmed and you don't really like spamming stuff, uh, Bear and Paladin are going to have fewer actions, but they're still doing the same role of holding threat and tanking stuff. So that was a very simple warrior rotation in a stable fight where stuff doesn't move around. Now I wanted to show you a different fight with a bunch of movement mechanics. And this is Hagen the Unclean. This boss is in Nax as well. I'll back it up a little bit. Yep, here we go. This fight, we have to move the boss regularly, which means we can't hit every ability like we could on Patchwork, because movement is the most important. If we have the boss over the goo, then everybody dies. So I'm tanking the boss, but I'm primarily focusing on making sure the boss is in the correct zone so we don't all die. And if you notice, I'm kind of swiveling my camera to make sure I can see where the raid is, I can see where the melee is, I can see the boss, and I can see the next zone that I need to be in. Camera management is really key, and I'm using right click to be able to swivel my camera around. I'll let you just look at the abilities I'm using there. Doing a shield slam, heroic. Tapping that revenge. I just used the stone shield potion. You have a two minute cooldown for some potion you could use. Rage potion or mitigation potion. In this fight, I chose the mitigation option because the boss applies a disease which lowers your health by a large amount. So I'd prefer to go for armor rather than to go for rage. And as you can see, I'm not really rage starved. So to pop a rage potion would be partially a waste. Shield slamming it, revenging it, doing heroics. I'll check my battle shout in the top right, make sure it's still up. If you are the main tank, oftentimes there will be a dedicated thunderclap or demo shout warrior. If you're trying to min max, ideally you want to have other people assigned to that, but in a real and practical sense, sometimes people forget, and sometimes your demo shout warrior is absent from the raid, which I think did happen this raid. And if you're the tank, well, just demo shout. It's better for you to spend 10 rage and put demo shout on the boss than to be a diva and say, well, somebody else should do this, I'm going to huff and puff and all this. Mistakes happen. Remember, one of your jobs as a tank is to be patient with the raid. They're not going to play perfectly, and neither are you. And it's best if you all just forgive each other and are compassionate through the mistakes and the fuck-ups. Well, that was the vision and positioning. You got to see a bunch of movement mechanics here. The camera management is definitely key. It may take a little bit of time to get used to the right-click method for managing your camera instead of Q and E, but it's really useful in Arena as well to be able to turn on a dime, be able to turn all the way around super fast because fights get scuffed sometimes and maybe the boss goes the wrong way and you have to fix everything and reposition. So that's a movement intensive fight. We showed you the target marking mechanics. And now in the chat, do we have any additional questions about tanking? What is the tanking question you have? I guess I can go over consumables. In BC, you've got only a couple that you can use. In vanilla, you can have a million different potions on you at the same time. But the ones I would recommend at least starting out for leveling would be Mongoose. You just want to have some battle elixir that gives you threat. Agility gives you a little bit of dodge, a little bit of armor as well, which is nice. Superior defense, you're going to have some kind of armor and survival elixir at 70 as well. When do you use Mocking Blow and do you prefer to use Taunt or Mocking Blow first? So you would want to use Taunt as your primary because it's in defensive stance. And you should be in defensive stance basically all the time. The only time you would want to go in battle stance is if you're in trash and you want to charge and build some initial rage. But the rest of the time, you're going to be in defensive stance, and the main reason for that would be this. Defiance. Defiance increases the threat generated by your attacks by 15% while in defensive stance, and increases expertise by 6. Take note that this is only while in defensive stance. If I'm in battle stance, 
I'm not benefiting from defiance, which is really big. Another thing that's kind of a hidden trick here is that Berserker Stance causes the warrior to deal 80% of their overall threat output. It's not written in the tooltip, and I don't know why, but that's how it is. So you really, really don't want to be in Berserker Stance, even if you feel like you're not at risk of dying, just because you're going to generate a lot less threat. 3% crit is not worth what is effectively a 30% reduction in threat, because Defensive Stance increases the threat generated by 10%. So you get 10% threat from defensive stance, and then you get an additional 15% threat from defiance. So you're dealing something like 25% bonus threat just by being a defiance tank in defensive stance, which is really big. Should a tank have a fast or slow swing speed weapon? Well, there are advantages to either one. For a fast weapon, that means you can heroic strike more often. Strong attack increases melee damage by 157, causes a high amount of threat. Fast weapon is nice because you can heroic strike more. A slow weapon would mean that your devastates hit harder, because devastate deals 50% of weapon damage plus 25. Overall, the conventional wisdom is that a fast weapon is better. So, if you look at a lot of the best tanking weapons like Thunder Fury, it's 1.9 speed. If you look at the KT weapons, Oh my goodness, this is set to BC. KT weapons like Hunger and Cold are 1.5 speed. Where is Nex? Has anyone seen Nex? Dungeons and Raids. Oh, there we go. You just click that. Right, so comparing Gressel Dawn of Ruin, which is a 2.7 speed sword, to Hunger and Cold which is a 1.5 speed sword, I would go for the Hungering Cold for a lot more heroic strikes. Taunt also brings you to top threat, Mocking Blow doesn't. That is correct. So the usual approach would be you go in, you're tanking the stuff, say this guy here, the Skull, he's attacking one of my healers. I will taunt him, but sometimes taunt is resisted. If you're in voice comms, it's good to call that out so people know that it was resisted. And then you go battle stance and mocking blow. So taunt is your main go-to for grabbing threat on something and getting it back to you. And mocking blow is what you use if things get messed up. If your mocking blow also gets parried or dodged, you can challenging shout. So you've got three things you can do. Taunt first, if you need to get it back on you. And then if that doesn't work, battle stance, mocking blow which has a two minute cooldown. And if that doesn't work, you can challenging shout as your final option. And if you've done a taunt and that missed and a mocking blow and that missed and a challenging shout and that also missed, your taunt should be up again. So you can taunt once more. Do you memorize the entire route of a dungeon before tanking it for the first time? I do not. I went into most of these dungeons without too much preparation. Just for some backstory, back in original vanilla, I was a night elf warrior, and I didn't tank too well. I was an off tank, but it wasn't great, and I used to click a lot of abilities, and I did get teased in voice comms a few times because they could hear the, the clicking in the voice. And they said, wow, you clicking your abilities? Yeah. Well, what a noob. So I said, well, I'm going to hotkey all my abilities then. And that's actually been a big edge for me, because I think a lot of people do click stuff, and you're basically never going to be able to keep up with the tank rotation if you have to click some of your stuff. So just as an initial mechanical step, bind your abilities. If you're leveling up, you can do it in a nice and easy sense where you get a new ability, you put it on your bar, you assign it to a hotkey. Everything should be assigned to a hotkey. And for a general kind of rule for how you should set up your hotkeys, I try to make the abilities that I use the most very easy to reach. So you look at this. Shield Slam is bound to E. That's very easy to reach. And I need to use that every six seconds. Demo Shout is bound to Shift B, which is a little bit harder to use than E. But I don't need to spam Demo Shout. I only need to do that once per pull and then I'm done. Shift Q, for example, takes a little bit more effort than E, but I only need an Intimidating Shout sometimes. So that's kind of your wisdom for how to set up hotkeys. If you need to use it a lot, it should be very easy to reach. 
I know a lot of veteran WoW players have their stuff all bound to 1, 2, 3, 4, all that kind of stuff. If you're trying to hit 6 for some ability you have to spam all the time, your hand is going to hurt. So just for your own survival and your own hand health and joints and all that, try to make it easy on yourself so your hand doesn't have to move too far. You can't see the numbers here, but I'll have my stances bound to 3 for battle, 4 for defensive, 5 for berserking. I'll go over my spec real quick so you can see what I'm working with. This is at level 60, so at level 70 we'll have more talents to use. But Tactical Mastery is really nice. It gives you some rage retention whenever you change stances. If you go to your Warrior Trainer, there is Stance Mastery, which gives you a default of 10 whenever you change stances. You should get that. And then I have a couple points in defense. Toughness is really nice, 10% to overall armor. Shield spec is a must, increases your block chance and also means you get one rage when you block. Imp shield block is also a must, makes you immune to crushing blows. Last stand is a really good survival talent. It's an eight minute cooldown as well, which means you can use this pretty often. I would say if there's a pull that's going south, you would last stand first, and then if you need to as a last resort, you can use shield wall. Bear in mind, shield wall needs a shield and it needs defensive stance. You could make a macro for yourself that gives you a shield to equip before you cast the ability in the case that you're maybe a fury warrior who wants to be able to shield wall in case you get threat and need to save a pull you get defiance which we talked about before it's really big for threat and the expertise also helps with connecting with the boss and building threat i have a point in imp taunt just to make it down the tree taunt is a really nice ability and as a bonus torrents have increased range which also means increased taunt range Imps under armor, that means my devastates are cheaper to use, which improves my threat output. Concussion blow is what you need to get shield slam. It's a really nice ability to use on trash. If you're in a raid, a lot of the stuff is going to be immune to stuns, but this is a pretty short cooldown. You got 45 seconds, boom, you can stun this guy for 5 seconds. He's not doing any damage to you. That gives you a lot of control in the pull. In addition, shield slam. This is your best ability for building threat. You should use it every time it's up. It also dispels one magic effect on the target. Focus Rage means all my abilities that I'm using for offense are cheaper. This helps my threat. Very nice. Improved Defensive Stance means that I take less damage from spells. Very nice on the healers. It smooths out all your incoming damage from magic. Vitality. Kind of goes without saying. 5% stamina is huge. 10% strength is also huge. And then you've got Devastate at the bottom of the tree, which we went over. It replaces your Sunder, and I even just put it on the same hotkey where I would normally keep my Sunder. In the Fury tree, I just have 5 points in crit for more threat. And in the Arms tree, I have 3 points in Imperoic for more threat. Is there much variation in tank builds, or is there a correct way to set up your talents? So people may tell you different things about this, but my advice would be to assess what you are tanking and what you are doing as a player. The spec that is best for you is a spec that fits what you are trying to do. So maybe you're an off tank and you tank sometimes, but not all the time. You could do a sort of hybrid spec where you take more damage talents and fewer mitigation talents. And maybe you just get defiance and last stand and imp shield block and you put the rest of your points in fury. That would be a valid spec if you're someone who does dungeons, heroics, and maybe you off tank in a raid, but you're not the main tank and you don't tank all the time. Maybe you're someone who does a lot of PvP. You could think about what talents you want that allow you to thrive in the greatest number of situations you find yourself in. One point of encouragement too is that it's not too expensive to respec. If you respec all the time, it's 50 gold per time. If you don't respec too often, it starts at one gold up to five gold and increases in increments so you should find the spec that suits you and think about what kind of player am i am i a tank primarily am i mixing up tanking and dps and sometimes am i tanking heroics or am i tanking the biggest bosses in a 25 man I don't think the respec cost goes up, and you can do daily quests for a good bit of gold every day. 
I'll show you where my key bindings are for my action bar. You go into key bindings here, action bar, and then I just bound all these. This is your main actions right here and this one. And then special action, that's your stances. Or if you're a druid, those would be your forms. So bear, cat, tree, etc. Travel and bird. And then for multi-action bar, this would be your bottom left bar. This is the bottom right bar. And then there are two right bars if you have them both enabled. Target markers are here. Let me see if there's anything that you might need to set up in the interface. Auto loot is pretty nice. Just for picking stuff up. I don't think any of this is super necessary. Target of target. This is actually really important. So in the interface combat, target of target will tell you what stuff is focusing on, which is really important because that's your job as the tank. I'm going to pull it back here so you can see what that looks like. Having a ranged weapon and being able to range pull is a really good skill that you should get familiar with. You're not always going to have a hunter in the raid. And doing a range pull means you don't put yourself at risk to ass pulling stuff from the sides. If I just charge into one of these pulls, there could be a patrol and it's a little bit higher danger. If you do a range pull and then back up, you can set up a pull in a safe location for yourself. So you can see here target of target, this Anvil Rage Overseer is targeting Brunt. That way you can kind of just tab through. And then if you're tabbing targets and you see one of them is not attacking you, you can just grab it, taunt it. If you miss, mocking blow. If you miss, challenging shot. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that in BC, it's not the warrior meta anymore. Really what they mean is you don't stack warriors and mass them in a 25-man raid like you do in a speedrunning guild in vanilla. But Warrior is still a very good class. Some would say it's the best class for tanking in most of the content. Warrior tanking has the most utility. Uh, it's not the best for AoE tanking. If you're really good at tab targeting, I would say that you can rival a Paladin tank or a Bear tank. But Bears have Swipe, which is really nice, where you would be building threat on your primary target, but the Swipe would be hitting the X. And that's a pretty good amount of threat. So if your DPS are all focusing Skull with you, your swipe threat on the X should keep the X off the healer and off the DPS, even if they cleave and if they whirlwind and that kind of thing. Or if it's a mage to an AOE, your swipe threat should be more than flame strike threat or blizzard threat. Well, I think that was basically all I wanted to cover for a tank 101. We talked about itemization, mitigation versus threat gear. We talked about the important stats that you could go for. We talked about warrior spec, warrior rotation. We talked about key bindings, target markers, positioning, your attitude and your role, patience with the team, and patience with yourself. And just what it means to be a big tank in classic BC. Appreciate you all tuning in, and I'll see you on the next time we talk about tanking with Brun. From me, Brun, and all tanks around the world, best of luck to you, and ancestors watch over you.